Welcome everyone to the third Empath tutorial. I am Ryan Mestach, one of the co-founders of Empath, and in this third tutorial we will talk about how you can set up a study, study for a bunch of participants, for a group of participants, and how you can automate everything. In the previous, um, in the previous tutorials we zoomed in into um, how to create a questionnaire or schedule for a single participant, but now we will do everything for a group participants. So how do you do this? Well, you have to create a protocol. Here on the left side, when you click on participants, you can see protocols and there you can click on. At least you can see this um, when you have a premium license of uh, MPOT. And then you can create a new protocol by clicking on this plus sign here. And let's call it, um, for example, a tutorial protocol and now we can edit this tutorial protocol like we can edit uh, a single participant as you can immediately see this also looks exactly the same as a normal participant here on top we can add uh, questionnaires and here in the bottom we can add um, a schedule um, as uh, mentioned in the previous tutorial, um, it's best to work with questionnaires uh, from the library uh, in the schedule. So it's also what we will do here. So um, maybe to explain a bit further, a, a protocol is kind of a general participant. Is your uh, is is how is it, it it has a questionnaires and a schedule that each of the participants of your research will have. Uh, and here in the schedule, we will add now some questionnaires that we have exported previously in the library. For example, at uh, between eight and 10, we can have a stress questionnaire uh, from the library. We can edit it um, and so on. Let's just add a few now and so on. Um, now there is one big difference with the scheduler of a single participant. That is when we click on it, we have this section here before, here uh, at the end. It states that when applying this template, this interaction should be planned at this specific day. This is uh, what was always the case uh, for a single participant. So it would be sent on Friday, uh, March uh, 15 at eight o'clock. So this specific uh, day. However, when you create a protocol, the default is this day relative to the starting day. This means that um, when a, a participant joins the research, this is the first day of the research. This is the second day, this is the third day, fourth day, fifth day, and so on. Um, so therefore, the default, I think, is, is a good thing, this day relative to the starting date. This is what you often need in research. The third type is a bit more complex. This is the next day of this type. So this would be the first Friday of the research, the first Saturday, the first Sunday, the first Monday, the first Thursday, the first uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and then when we go next, this would be the schedule, what, what is planned here, would be on the second Friday. Um, why would you use something like that? Well, for example, um, if you want to have different questionnaires on the weekend compared to the week. In that case, you can, have, um, you can use this um, the next day of this type and then you know what, is, uh, what will be sent to the participant on the first Saturday, on the first Sunday, so in the first weekend and during the first week and so on. But in most cases, this day relative to the starting date is more than sufficient. So we can now click on OK. Um, we could uh, change the settings here and then let's fill out this uh, fill schedule, extend last day, some additional days and voila. When we click on save all, the uh, actual protocol is saved and created. Now we can use this protocol in multiple ways. We could go to a single participant, for example, uh, Meren here. Um, has uh, already a, a few um, schedules planned. Let's clear everything. And what we can do now is we can add a specific protocol to this participant. We can click on the plus, uh, and then we can click here on tutorial protocol. Uh, the protocols you have will appear here on top. Oh, um, 
optical save all, okay. Um, tutorial protocol, and then we can choose if we want it um, starting today, starting on a custom date, um, or a previous starting date. So now we will choose uh, on today, and then all the interactions, uh, all this, the questionnaires we had in the uh, protocol will be added here. Of course, not the ones that are in the past here, so not the 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock uh, of the uh, current day. Then we can click Save All and everything and the, the full protocol is now added to these participants. However, this is again like working for one single participant and of course in this tutorial we will also talk about how to automate everything for a group of uh, participants. So. To, uh, to automate a study, you have to go to settings here on the left side and then click on auto enroll. And these things here on top are the most important things to automate your study. The first thing um, you have to choose if you want to have an intake uh, or not. So no intake or a simple intake. An intake is the first questionnaire that is automatically shown to the participant when the participant adds your uh, research project in the app. So when, uh, when a participant adds you, this questionnaire will be shown immediately. And this questionnaire can be used to say hello to the participant, like welcome to the study, how nice of you to join the study. It can explain a bit about the study. For example, this uh, study is about stress uh, feelings when you are um, at work, for example. Uh, but it can also be used um, to ask consent. For example, um, well, do you consent to uh, join this study? And the last thing uh, we use the intake questionnaire um, for a lot is for longer questionnaires. For example, for personality questionnaires, for uh, psychopathology questionnaires, like these questionnaires that you only want to ask uh, once, we all bundle them in the first intake questionnaire um, so that we have a lot of background information about the uh, participants. So uh, you always have to take an intake questionnaire from the library. So let's look about, if I called something intake, for example, let's call it um, intake um, tests. Um, and then here uh, on, the, uh, on the right side, you can choose a protocol. Uh, here, well, by using a protocol, and then here you can choose a protocol you want, for example, tutorial protocol. And when you choose start baseline schedule automatically when clients adds me, then this protocol is automatically started when the participant has added you. So, in generally, general, what would happen? Participant adds you, then fills out the intake questionnaire, and the tutorial protocol is automatically started for the participants without you having to fear, interfere in, uh, in anything. It's also possible to choose start baseline schedule after consent is given in the intake. For example, when you have consent questionnaires uh, in the intake um, questionnaires, and these are questionnaires with label that start with consent and are yes, no questions, then you can enable this and then the uh, protocol will only start if yes was answered to all consent questions. So this is also an easy trick. Uh, of course, you don't want the protocol to start when the participant doesn't consent to your research. So therefore, you can also enable this. And then um, the, um, the, the, the protocol will only start when consent was actually given to the uh, participant. So when you have chosen all the settings from, for the default uh, enrollment, it is of course still very important to save everything uh, and only then it is of course active. Now, when talking about study protocol, automatization and so on, I think it's also important to quickly talk about how to invite participants to a study because this is also um, yeah, a vital uh, part of course. Uh, there are multiple ways um, for participants uh, to add your research. Uh, and I think I can explain them best uh, when looking at this uh, from the participants' side. 
So let's go to a, a participant. This is a new participant. Just downloaded the Empath app for the first time. Uh, and then in the first screen, uh, the participant has to give a nickname. Uh, we specifically ask for a nickname, not a real name, because this nickname should not be used to identify a participant. It can also be changed later by the participant. So let's say, for example, uh, wallflower here. Uh, we gather as uh, little as possible identifiable information from the participant. This is, of course, for privacy reasons, and it is also a very, very good security uh, measure. You see that even the biggest companies get hacked once in a while, Google, uh, Facebook, and so on. Let's hope it will never happen to us. We, had a lot, we have a lot of security measures in place to prevent this. But if this happens, we have almost no identifiable, uh, identifiable, identifiable information about the participants. So you will only be able to see that Wallflower is feeling good or bad. But um, it's very difficult to know who Wallflower actually is because we don't gather the real name, we have no email address, we have no phone address, and so on. Uh, so it's very good for privacy, but therefore you also shouldn't use this nickname to identify your participants to, for example, uh, link with external data. Uh, in the next page, um, participants need to um, accept the terms and conditions, and after that, participants uh, should save the recovery code. Uh, because we don't have an email address uh, of the participant, participants cannot use the email address to recover their account, but they have to use this recovery code. Uh, when participants lose their phone, break their phone, have a new phone or so, uh, something else, they can just um, fill in this recovery code in the beginning uh, and with that the study just uh, resumes. And after that, participants can add a specific research. And this is an important uh, place. Participant can just uh, look for a researcher by his name, for example, Freud in this case, uh, or by the code of the researcher. For example, in my case, this would be code zero. You can find your code here on the top left on your uh, dashboard. Um, but um, the best way to, uh, to identify participants is to use an invitation code here. Uh, here in a dashboard, uh, an auto-enroll, you can go to invitations and here you can create multiple invitation codes. Let's create, for example, five. Um, and now these codes can be used uh, to give to participants. Uh, and these codes should actually be used to identify uh, participants because now you know whom you're giving the invitation code to. For example, you can give this code to, uh, to Patrick uh, and Patrick use this invitation code, then um, all the data, uh, when you export the data from, from Patrick, will be linked to this code. So each line from Patrick will start with this invitation code. Uh, and you know uh, who you gave this invitation code to, so you will be identify this participant using this code. Participants should fill in this code uh, here at the same page uh, they, they find, um, they, they look for the research. So what was it again? ZSDF, ZSDF, space, uh, NCKN, NCKN, voila, and then they also find the research. Um, and then I can click on it, click on add, and then the research actually start. Uh, first they will see the intake questionnaire. This is the intake questionnaire we've um, we saved here on top. Um, so here um, intake test 2 was used. We can go to the library to look at this intake test 2. Um, it's already open here. So first we have welcome to the study. It's just some welcome text. Then in the next page, we have some longer text that kind of explains the study or just has some random text about the about research uh, in this case. Uh, and the next page, uh, very important, do you consent to this study? So here we are asking for consent. Of course, in a real study, it, it's more elaborate. Uh, you have more information, more text, and so on. So this is, of course, just an example. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, the label starts indeed with consent. So also the protocol will only start if uh, participants actually 
answer yes to this question. So click on yes. Um, and then um, some questions about uh, some personality traits, personality traits. Um, I'll fill it in and that's it already. Um, as you could see here, this was the last um, set of um, questions about uh, personality. So now this intake is finished and consent was given. So the protocol should have been automatically added to the participant. So let's go to the participant. Uh, let's go to Wildflower. We can go here. And as you can see, the whole um, stress questionnaire protocol, the tutorial protocol has been added to the participant. And at all these times, participants will get um, will get a new uh, notification for a new questionnaire. So um, with that information, this tutorial um, is finished. Um, there are of course many more ways to um, there are many more ways to um, automate a study, to add protocols to participants. So if you have an idea and you don't immediately find how to do this in Empath, feel of course free uh, to, to mail us. Uh, but I think after this first three tutorial, the first tutorial about creating a questionnaire, the second tutorial about scheduling questionnaires, and the third protocol about study automatization, I think you're certainly ready to set up your first experience sampling study, your first repeated measurement study, um, um, uh, or your first research uh, in MPOT. So with that, um, I wish you a lot of fun in using our platform.